Hi everyone, welcome to Local Aces video guide series. Today, we are going to talk about a very special and important feature in our system, which is the content delivery network. Uh, this is a complex concept that we have to dive in to understand how important and relevant is on Local Aces system. Why? Because first, it, up, it lets you upload all your content into the system and download it easily. Then um, it lets you update your content that you go, which is very important when you have a localization project and internationalization um, project uh, where you have multiple languages and it's going uh, on the long run. And lastly, uh, it makes your language assets quickly available through 450 uh, storage locations worldwide. So this is a big deal. Uh, and we're going to dive into it with uh, someone who knows it very well, which is our CEO, Vasek Hodek. Welcome, Vasek. Hi, Marta. Happy to be there. Okay, so uh, how are you, Vasek? Oh, I'm doing great and I'm looking forward to talk to you today. Okay, let's dive in because we have a lot to discuss. So, Vasek, tell me the story about how CDN came about because, as I understand it, it's a very important uh, feature um, to update uh, multilingual websites and apps. And I was wondering what made you sit and code for the first time for this feature? Yeah, uh, I knew that it would be a very useful feature a long time before it was actually conceived. There was a bunch of reasons why we started localizing, a mm -hmm. bunch of painful moments in our previous company. Mm -hmm. Working on mobile apps and supporting over 30 languages, we always struggled with having all of them fully translated. It was actually impossible to keep all of them mm -hmm. uh, translated. And so we created an option to update translations over the air. It was a precursor to our current uh, Android and iOS SDK. And CDN was like a logical extension outside of the mobile platforms. Uh, it's an extension everywhere where we don't have SDK available yet. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a pivotal moment for local Asia. Yes, yes. It's really, I believe that it really helps our customers to quickly deliver translations and that is what we was like uh, trying to achieve. So Vasek, uh, do you remember any particular moment when the first user of the CDN system uh, realized that it could be a game changer for them? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't recall the very first uh, user saying that, but we get a lot of positive feedback on our support channels and as users are delivering terabytes of localizable files over our CDN, they are probably saying something like that to themselves, I believe so. So um, what can you say about the CDN customers? Uh, are they startups or small businesses? Or are we talking about bigger companies? Who, who, do, who does use uh, the CDN? We thought that the typical customer would be a small company or maybe a smaller team because they can save a lot of money and a lot mm -hmm. of time on infrastructure and its management. Mm -hmm. However, over time, companies of all sizes started to use CDN because it's a great solution. Uh, it can deliver their files really quickly worldwide. Uh, there are automatic releases. It's really very, very automated feature. And also you can control everything from, from our beautiful UI and it's an mm -hmm. extra benefit on top of it. Yeah, it's certainly user friendly. Uh, so how did you feel like personally, Vasek? Uh, what was, how was the moment when the first terabyte of information was uploaded to the system, to the CDN? Uh, how did you feel as a software developer? Yeah, it's always the awesome feeling when users start using something you created, uh, you know, that's the best reward for your hard work for all those uh, months uh, in front of, you know, keyboard, uh, writing yeah. code and testing things again and again. So yeah, it was, it was amazing. So let's hop into the technical details. For those who don't know how a CDM work, uh, can you explain a little bit how the system just functions? Yes, of course. Uh, CDN uh, kind of caches uh, your website, multimedia, or project files uh, in multiple data centers around the world. And when the user requests the file, uh, it delivers it from the nearest server, shortening the loading time and keeping your users happy because they don't need to wait. And there are, of course, also specific uh, 
types of CDNs, mm -hmm. uh, for example, for video encoding, or as in our case, uh, for managing localizable assets, uh, including multiple different releases and additional data. That sounds great. Uh, practically speaking, if a company wants to try the CDN, what are the fun functionalities they're going to to have available? Um, what is it good for? Yeah, the basic uh, functionality is that whenever there is a new translation available on our platform, mm -hmm. we automatically publish it and distribute it to our CDN, making it available in all the data centers around the world. And it's like uh, the, the translation is instantly uh, available in your website that you can control everything through a uh, beautiful UI. And of course, this is just a tip of the iceberg because there is a lot of additional features our CDN can provide uh, because along with the localizable assets, we also distribute metadata files, describing mm -hmm. your content, providing, for example, formulas for resolving plurals uh, or listing the languages that the content is available in. Mm -hmm. And you can build a very advanced logic on top of our CDN because you have all this data, not only the actual translations available and you have mm -hmm. them uh, anywhere in the world. So this means that when you translate something uh, in an already translated website or app, it's going to be updated uh, instantly over the air, right? Yes, exactly. And this is the most uh, loved feature of our CDN because you don't need to do anything. You don't need uh, no, no people, no infrastructure, no storage, no logic for processing files. Everything is fully automated on our side. And with every release, you get uh, your translations everywhere and mm -hmm. they are always up to date. So is it instant? How long does it take to update? Uh, yeah, there are numerous data centers around the world. So when we uh, actually publish a new version of your localizable assets, uh, we also uh, issue an invalidation request to mm -hmm. CDN uh, and it can take like uh, 15 minutes uh, before your files are available, all the all of the edge locations. Mm -hmm. It sounds great, but uh, I was thinking that if there is any startup founder here listening to us, or any business at all that is trying to implement this and they haven't done it ever, uh, maybe it's gonna sound too complex. Is it complex? A complex, or how how can you implement it if you've never had a CDN? Uh, understand. Usually, uh, somewhere in your source code of your product or service or website, uh, you load files with uh, the translations. Mm -hmm. And all you need to do is to actually, you know, uh, load those files from our CDN. So you just replace this uh, UI, URL or the location and download the file from our CDN and you get it uh, up, like connected okay. uh, correctly. Uh, but as I pointed out previously, uh, you can build advanced logic on top of our CDN and mm -hmm. if you invest a you know, bit of time, you can implement a nice concept like a langu language switcher mm -hmm. completely based on our CDN. You can control the languages your website is available in uh, through our UI. You don't need mm -hmm. developers to enable new languages. You don't need uh, developers to fix bugs in translations mm -hmm. and so on. So all of these things can be done with our CDN. It's a pretty amazing concept. Yeah, it sounds like a fairly easy system to implement. Fantastic. Yes, yes, definitely very easy to start and test it out. So we've discussed the many benefits that CDN has and the different types of company that can use it. But I was wondering if you can summarize, Pashek, uh, why is CDN good for businesses? Oh, we discussed that too with our customers uh, because they are the best source of, you know, uh, mm. meaningful, meaningful feedback. And they love uh, how seamless our CDN is, how painless is the process of uh, using it and that it's scalable to billions of requests and uh, the worldwide mm. coverage is also an important aspect. Uh, they usually need to, you know, maintain uh, additional CDN for other files as well because we 
only care about the localization files, files mm -hmm. but uh, there is no need to like uh, take extra care about translation, about the process. And more importantly, we also bring uh, many new features like support for uh, different plurals, language listing, mm -hmm. or maintaining different versions uh, of their translation so they can, uh, you know, test all the content, uh, for example, on the testing environment before hitting the production. Mm -hmm. And there are also other hi highlights. One of them is uh, loved by developers mostly because mm -hmm. they can reduce uh, the interaction with uh, the localization process. Some companies uh, uh, was able to were able to completely remove developers out of the process, wow. uh, which is like a saving a lot of money and uh, yeah. definitely developers sanity. And of so course, they can focus on and code, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, I believe that like uh, no developers want to you know handle files and send mm. them back and forth just to get something translated or just boring, to fix. it's tiresome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So. That's about it. Uh, it can like uh, bring all those benefits. And of course, there are like uh, additional additional things. It de definitely it, uh, shorten the release cycles. It can uh, allow the marketing department to test new translation or new wording. It might not mm -hmm. be just a fix of the translation. It can be a completely different marketing message that they want to test. And mm -hmm. all these things uh, can be like uh, the side benefits of our CD and not just the technical part. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Vasek, let's talk about money, which is a tricky subject for many startups and small companies. Uh, how does CDN keep the co keeps the cost low uh, and TCO? Uh, how how does it look when we are implemented it? Yeah, uh, you know, people tend to underestimate the cost of their own work. We all know it. Uh, it yeah. feels like a free feature just because it's included in your salary. Uh, yeah. But do you really want to spend uh, uh, like uh, 10 times or maybe even more times more money uh, to save a few bucks on our CDN? Do you mm -hmm. really want to, you know, build, manage and bug fix your own solution for publishing translation, making them available worldwide? And, mm -hmm. you know, if you get into a bit more complicated stuff, like things we talked about already, uh, like automatic releases, plurals, mm -hmm. or some logic for language switching, uh, the cost will skyrocket very quickly, quickly. And you still don't have the beautiful OI uh, that our CTN comes with. You will need to invest much more money to get the yeah. same experience. So it ends, up, it ends up being an affordable solution. Uh, it could be more expensive to build your own. That's what you're saying. Yeah, it's actually not that expensive. If you uh, see our website, there are some examples of CDN pricing. And even if you are delivering like billions of requests and terabytes of data, it's pretty pretty cheap uh, mm -hmm. if you compare it with like a, you know a salary of a average developer. And you have a, the peace of mind, I guess, of yeah, having everything updated. Definitely, you don't need to care about anything and uh, you don't need to fix bugs and, you know, be afraid that something uh, will be like a broken next morning and so on. <laughs> so let's talk about the concept of latency. What is latency and how does local ACCD and help reduce it? Oh, uh, there's one funny fact. Uh, we all think that speed of light is amazingly high. Uh, but believe it or not, it can go around our planet about seven times per second. It means that even with all those optical cables, accessing your files across the half of the world can take a significant time. And we call this time latency. Mm -hmm. So latency for cross-continent requests can be up to hundreds of milliseconds. And that's not acceptable for such an important, fi important files like your translations. Because mm -hmm. Without uh, content, you can't even render your website correctly. Yeah. So, for example, if you are based in Europe or in the US uh, and your customers are in Japan, uh, you want to surf uh, those or do, do their files uh, from the same region uh, to get them in milliseconds and not mm -hmm. in like a half a second. Because if you want to download like, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 uh, files to actually get your 
website uh, fully functional, functionally, mm -hmm. uh, it would be a significant difference if you uh, deliver them from uh, like across the half of the globe. Uh, another feature that I wanted to talk uh, about with you um, is uh, that the CDM works on top of Amazon S3 and CloudFront. So I was wondering, why did you decide to use Amazon Web Services for that? Uh, to be honest, we use amazing CloudFront uh, on our own site. We use it to speed up delivery of our assets, for example, uh, screenshots and uh, other files that you mm -hmm. can see during the translation process. And so we were like uh, pretty familiar with it. We already know how to use it, how to invalidate caches, how to calculate cost. And I strongly believe that uh, we should focus on bringing value to our customers, not learning another cloud solution. And so we've decided that Amazon being the largest cloud provider in the world is a good enough option for localizer to work with. It's certainly uh, used by millions of people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That, that was like, uh, you know, uh, I believe that Microsoft or Google would be uh, also a good option, but we were used to uh, work with Amazon. And of course, uh, if you prefer another cloud provider, uh, we can extend our CDN. Mm -hmm. And in the enterprise plan, then it's an option to, to deliver your files to a different location. That's good to know. There's other options too. So there are multiple use cases for our CDN, uh, Vasek. Uh, I was wondering if you could pinpoint one or two uh, that you come um, come across with and tell us a little bit about them. Yeah, the core use case is always the same: to mm -hmm. quickly and reliably deliver translated files worldwide. Mm -hmm. But even we are surprised uh, with the different use cases and creative solutions that our customers came came up with. Uh, of course, they use CDN to control the languages their website is available in or to speed up the release cycles. These features are something we already talked about, but there is also a lot of additional additional use cases we saw, like uh, empowering their community to contribute new translations because they can see their mm -hmm. contribution quickly on the website, which is awesome. And some of them even perform, for example, A-B testing using uh, our releases to fine tune translations of their marketing message. So yeah, it's uh, like a very, very creative here and, you know, surprise us. Many possibilities. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Vasek, for all this information. This was super informative. Uh, I think our users might have understood what our CDN is, but if they have any questions, where can they go to? Yeah, first, uh, you are welcome and thank you for uh, today's talk. Uh, yeah, exactly. We barely cover all the use cases our CDN is able or great for. So I would recommend our users to head to our documentation and blog to learn a bit more about what this feature can do for them. Okay, so we are going to leave all of the resources down in the description box, including a complete guide to localize CDM. And we will see you in the next video, hopefully very soon. See you. Bye. Bye.